Part 1, Chapter 20 of Short History of the Christian Church by John Fletcher Hurst. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 20, Apocryphal Writings. The inventive spirit of the early church can be fully seen in the large mass of apocryphal works. While the close of the scriptural canon sealed the fate of all such writings, there was still a strong local attachment to some of them. One of the chief sources of these apocryphal productions was the Ebionotic and Gnostic heresies. The great body of the church was busied in resisting these heresies, and yet the Ebionites and Gnostics themselves produced many such works, and to the great outlying world the Christian church had to bear the responsibility for the authorship of works produced by its own heretics. The authors of the spurious writings confined themselves to no narrow territory. The whole realm of thought lay open to them, and they roamed at large. They were as much at home in the patriarchal times as in later periods, and were as skillful in writing works in the name of the Roman Clement as of Paul or Isaiah. The five favorite fields were, one, Old Testament history, two, the life of Jesus, three, the life and labors of the apostles, four, the epistles, and five, ecclesiastical polity and discipline. The book of Enoch enjoyed large popularity. It was a product of the century immediately preceding Christ, but in the second century it underwent adaptations to the new Christian conditions. It has been preserved in a translation from the Ethiopic manuscript. The testimony of the twelve patriarchs, written by a Jewish Christian, contains prophecy and admonition. It claims to have been written by the twelve sons of Jacob, who instruct their posterity on various duties, and foretell our Lord's incarnation and the downfall of Judaism. The Apocalypse of Moses, Isaiah's Ascension to Heaven, the fourth book of Ezra, and the prophecies of Hystaspes belong in the same prophetic category. The Sibylline Oracles were in fourteen books, and were an imitation of the Roman Sibyllines, which enjoyed wide popularity. The Christian Sibyllines were designed to promote Christian interests. They were prophecies concerning the second coming of Christ, the destruction of Rome, the coming of Nero as Antichrist, and the final triumph of Christianity. The Christian apologists made frequent appeals to them, though with varying confidence. They claim, in the text, to have been written by a daughter-in-law of Noah. This was certainly far enough back to satisfy the most antiquarian taste of the times. The apocryphal accounts of our Lord were abundant. The first gospel of St. James the Less was a minute description of the alleged early life of Christ, and the personal history of Mary. The Gospel of the Nativity of St. Mary, the history of Joachim and Anna and of the birth of Mary and the infant Saviour, the history of Joseph the Carpenter, the Gospel of the infant Saviour, and the Gospel of Thomas furnished a vast mass of legendary matter, which, though worse than valueless, shows at least how profoundly the thought of the Church was centred in the life and person of Jesus. The Gospel of Nicodemus, the Acts of Pilate, and the Epistles of Lentulus bear on the Passion of our Lord, and are very minute in legendary details. To the spurious apostolical correspondence belong the Epistle of Barnabas, the Epistle to the Laodiceans, an Epistle to the Corinthians, in the Armenian language, the correspondence of Paul with Seneca, the Epistle of Ignatius to the Mother of Jesus, and the epistles of the Holy Virgin to the inhabitants of Messina, Florence, and other cities. The Apocalypse of Peter, the Ascension of Paul, and an Apocalypse each by Thomas and Stephen, and a second Apocalypse by John, are only a small portion of this luxuriant department of spurious Christian literature. The Apostolical Constitutions was the most important writing on discipline and order proceeding from the early church. It is a collection of eight books of instruction for both the clergy and laity on practical duties and ecclesiastical usages and polity. They claim to have been written by the apostles, 
but really arose at different times no part having existed earlier than the third century the first six books bear internal evidence of having been written in the last quarter of the third century while the seventh and eighth indicate an origin not earlier than the fourth century the apostolic canons are brief rules for ecclesiastical discipline and law they were issued in the name of the roman clement as an authentic work of the apostles but were afterwards declared by the roman bishop hormistas in the sixth century to be apocryphal the second trullian council a d 692 rejected them as authority for the eastern church they were never recognized by the western church end of chapter 20